So do yourself a favor in Diablo 4, complete all of your side quests. What's going on Diablo fans? My name is Debrunsky. In today's video, I wanna make a quick guide covering the Diablo 4 Renown system. So I wanna to touch on what Renown is, how you obtain it and what benefits it unlocks for your character because in my opinion, it is a very overlooked source of power for your build in Diablo 4. So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So what is the Renown system in Diablo 4? Well, essentially it is a reputation based system that provides your character with individual milestone upgrades that's based on each individual act in the world of Sanctuary. So kind of expanding on that a little bit, if you open up the world map, you'll notice that there's, again, five individual acts, right? So Fractured Peaks, Skosglin, etc. You move through the entire map. There's a ton of individual activities to do in each one of these maps. And if you hover your mouse over Fractured Peaks, for example, you'll notice if you look at the top bar above, I have collected 1,125 out of 2,490 Renown. You'll see I have six out of seven of the waypoints. I've cleared three of the enemy strongholds. I've done one of the 35 side quests, which I know is kind of ironic because in the intro of the video, I said that you need to do all your side quests. I've completed a couple of the dungeons and collected all the altars of Lilith. Every single one of these tasks is going to add to that total Renown meter. And then if you click on the view rewards hotkey, you'll notice that for each individual area, there's again, five milestones with a particular reward. So for example, the first milestone reward is 3000 gold and one skill point. Now that might not seem like much, but again, that's one skill point for every area, like I mentioned earlier. So Fractured Peaks, a skill point. Dry Steps, Awazar, etc. So it's five total skill points for the first milestone. And then you move on to the next one is one potion capacity for each individual act. And then again, another additional skill point for each individual act. So 10 total skill points. That is, in my opinion, a pretty substantial power upgrade. The fourth and fifth tier, you do not get access to until you've unlocked world tier three difficulty, which you can do from completing a capstone dungeon. But again, max oval rewards. And the final fifth milestone is plus four to Paragon points. But again, that's for each individual act for a total of 20 Paragon points. So if you open like the Paragon board, this is a level 56 Druid. I've just opened my second Paragon board, but like 20 points would get me over to this legendary node. And I do also want to mention, in addition to, again, like the Paragon points and plus skill points, the Altars of Lilith, there is a ton of them. So if you hover over like Fractured Peaks, I've collected 28 out of the possible 28. Every time you touch one of these Altars of Lilith, it provides a permanent power upgrade for your current character and any other character that you're going to roll. So it's going to either give you two to strength, two to intelligence, two to willpower, two to dexterity, or plus five to max oval reward. It's like if you're doing a world event, it's going to give you an additional plus five to the maximum number of ovals that will drop. But if you have completed the campaign and you click on adventure mode and you're starting in Kiova Shed with a new character, you're going to have all that extra power. So remember when a lot of people were kind of telling you to start on world tier one difficulty for your initial campaign playthrough, because for the most part, it made more sense because you could clear faster than that 20% experience reward that you get at world tier three two, excuse me. But if you're starting world tier two with a new character and you have all, I think, 164 total statues of Lilith, getting all that extra power, you're just going to steamroll through world tier two difficulty. But uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover for this video. I again, I think it was relatively straightforward. Tried to touch on most of the important points for the renowned system. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys like this video, if you like more of them. I, I kind of planning on making a beginner Paragon board video and just kind of short to the point uh, Diablo 4 tutorial videos. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, if you could throw a like on it, that'd be awesome. And I'll catch you guys on my next uh, YouTube video or live stream. Peace. to the right.